Well, here we are then for some more league racing action. And today we're here for the French Grand Prix in the PSGL PC League, of course, in top split. And today is a big one because, um, for example, Jan Otmir is back, uh, Bay Brumrand is back. So uh, the level is going to be a lot higher, you know, amongst other people like Danny Moreno racing in this league, of course, you know, for Brisbane and also um, so many people. The, the level is so, so high in this league. I can't even begin to describe um, where to start. So, yeah, it's going to be a tough one for us. And, you know, having Jano and Barry back is going to make it harder because there's two more positions but automatically not going to get. So, yeah. Yeah, we're currently in Q1 and you can tell it's absolutely just pissing it down. It's it's raining everywhere and the full wet conditions, full wet tyres as it stands right now. And you can see we're currently P16 as I'm going to end my second time lap. I went for a three lap run on the full wet and we're now going to go on board for a full lap because as you can see, making our way down towards turn one, we're currently P9 but I need to improve. The track is constantly evolving all the time as Yano sets a new fastest lap, pushing us down to P10. And I was asking my engineer at this point if I should push or am I done? You know, can I chill out? And he said to me push, which tells me that I don't have a lot of margin in my back pocket. So I need to get on with it. So the previous lap felt pretty good, but this one already you'll see here a tenth and a half up as we make our way onto the Mistral straight. So a pretty decent uh, start to the final lap here as uh, we now get pushed down to P11. So people gradually improving and setting better times. Bring the car over to the right hand side and brake on the curb. Really aggressive everywhere to be fair around this track across all the curbs. You need to really, you know, use them to maximize lap time. Uh, on the exit though, we're getting a bit more time and we're now nearly the better part of three tenths up as we head into this long right at the end of the Mistral straight. You can see here, just a little lift trying to carry the momentum and uh, trying to carry the speed. We then go into the long double apex right. Important here to kind of go nice and tight on the entry and then swing wide and then get back nice and tight for a nice strong exit. And then this very, very tricky left hander, very late apex, trying to get good traction and exit speed out of there. As you can see, a bit of a twitch, but still, you know, two tenths up. We've lost a little bit of time. We were three tenths up at one point, uh, but now we're covering some of that time as we make our way through the final couple of corners as we now drop to P13, now P14, and we are right on the cusp here. And now P15, as we run up to the line, we need this lap now. And it was going to be P6 for us, a good lap of 41.2, and that will be the end of my Q1 session. And we are comfortably into Q2 and only two tenths off the pace, which is decent. So the car's working well. Of course, we are using a dry setup because the race is gonna be completely dry. So you have to kind of drive through the issues and the inconsistencies, of course, with the dry setup in wet conditions. We managed to do better than our teammate, which is quite surprising for Presonator. But look how close it is. You know, the top 14 covered by half a second. And had we not improved, we wouldn't have made it through. So we needed that lap and we delivered when it mattered as we now can jump into Q2. Now Q2 is uh, still going to be in the rain, but it's going to be an intermediate as the conditions were gradually improving. And it's looking like a dry Q3. Currently at the end of my first time lap here in this session, trying to get a good banker on the board. And we're going to see where this lap puts us amongst the shuffle. To be fair, it felt good. The pace seemed pretty decent as we go P3. So behind Donoso and Presnader, and within a tenth of my team, actually 0 0.6. So, uh, or 0 0.06, should I say. Six hundredths, very, very close. Currently still P3 as we're on my second lap now, so back-to-back -back push laps, and I was two and a half tenths up here, but I make a bit of a mistake. I tried to go flat through the long right, and I made a mistake and invalidated, so uh, this lap is gonna be no good for us, so we're gonna go ahead and just bring the car back into the pits, and uh, we're gonna go for a fresh set of inters, and go for our last push of the session. So you can see here, three minutes to go. This was my best lap of Q2. We're currently P12. We've got uh, Presnader on the bubble, Moreno P11, so, if we can get a big, a big lap here, this would be important for us. So into turn one, braking as the curb appears on the right-hand side. Really important for you here to kind of prioritize your exit. And to be fair, we're getting a little bit on that, but we're pretty much neck and neck with our previous best. Into the next right-hander, a lot of inside curb to open up the left and just being very cautious on the throttle. Nice and aggressive over this inside curb again, using all the exit, and then a purple sector one to bring the car back across here, but again, a bit of oversteer, and just making a small error there. I did gain a bit on the exit, but in general, I did throw away, you know, maybe a tenth, which, 
you know, could prove to be quite crucial. Uh, so yeah, we're now just under a tenth up, heading into the back straight chicane, fourth gear, as the notification on the right hand side of the screen bugged out for this one. Uh, trying to get a good exit, which we do, we get a nice bit of traction, and we find a bit more time as we're now two and a half tenths up on our previous best. So at the minute, we're exactly at the same spot as the previous lap before we invalidated. And you can see through here this time, just making sure we don't make the same mistake twice as we then head into the triple right-hander, double right-hander, um, trying to get that nice exit out of there, which we just about keep within track limits. And now into the long left, again, picking up a late apex here, slow in, fast out, and we're over three tenths up now. So this is looking pretty decent for us and a good lap. We're currently P13, but this could get us right back in the mix through the final couple of corners now. Just one more to go. I'll make a bit of an error. I'll run a bit wide, lock up a little bit, and I don't quite hit the apex, and I threw away about half a tenth because I was over four tenths up heading into the final corner. And across the line, we go P10, which is risky, risky business. You know, it was a bit of a shame. I went for another lap. You'll see here, I'm actually going to try and squeeze one more out because the track is evolving all the time and getting faster and faster. And we're a tenth down so far, but then heading into here, I try to push and we invalidate. So yeah, game over for us. And we can now just pray that nobody improves. But unfortunately, there was only one person that improved and that man was Danny Moreno. And unfortunately, we're out in Q2. Only just though, by the smallest of margins. Again, just like Q1, it was extremely close. And if you look at uh, Vallejo and P4, all the way down to, you know, Lucas UK behind me, it was so, so competitive. And on our best lap, that one tenth we threw away in the start of the second sector. And then also that half a tenth to maybe even the tenth actually at the final corner probably cost us a comfortable Q3 appearance. So a bit of a shame really. I was actually quite devastated and quite annoyed because the pace was there in the wet conditions and I really thought I could have gone to Q3 for a change and had a good chance because of course the tyre strategy is out the window because everyone's going to get the free tyre choice. So P11 isn't exactly a good thing for us in the race. Uh, but yeah, anyway, that is it for qualifying and Q2. We can now move into the race here at France. Okay, here we go. It's race time at France. And as I mentioned before, we're starting P11. Now, the big thing I noticed straight away, everybody went for the hard compound tires, except for Danny Moreno, who starts P3. He's also on mediums alongside myself. So we are going to be at a disadvantage. I was debating over the hard tire, but I went for the medium in the end. And we're going to go for an alternate strategy. So we need to be aggressive here as the lights go out for the French Grand Prix. The start wasn't great. Lucas UK gets an absolute rocket ship start in the house off the line. I can't believe how good his start was on the hard tyres. Santos turn one though, just trying to avoid getting wing damage as uh, Lucas has to cut across the chicane, which I believe he didn't even get a warning for um, based off of the feedback that I heard after, which I can't believe. But um, nonetheless, heading down towards the tricky section here, we've got uh, that's uh, Dylan Warren in the racing point trying to challenge me around the outside as we then go up the inside here of his teammate Ruben Vallejo into the slow section just trying to give Warren a bit of a squeeze there on, off the side of the track and they're just trying to get that traction down on the mediums and I thought I was safe here we're going to get a good run on his teammate but you'll see now behind us Warren is actually going for the overtake as well he's draining his ERS and I was questioning why was he going for this move so early on the hard tires but luckily we managed to break quite late and uh, get the measure of both of the racing points we then go around the outside through the chicane and we get ahead of Vallejo and they're going to keep battling here. We're going to have to use a bit of ERS just to make sure we don't get swallowed into it as we move up to P11 and heading into this kind of long right-hander, we are going to just about get ahead so we can now chill and let the two racing points battle behind as we now slot into P11 behind Fabrizio Donoso in the Renault and speaking of which, it actually goes for a moment here. Somehow we just about avoid hitting his car we managed to get the brakes on and take it nice and easy into that corner and avoid big contact and wing damage so a very key moment in this race and we move up into the top 10 as uh, Ruben Vallejo retires from the race I believe with wing damage so there we go good start from P11 up to P10 it should have been P9 but Lucas UK in front of us got an absolutely just incredible start which I still can't believe he got and for the next few laps I try to use my medium tyres to get close but unfortunately around here again similar to most tracks recently we are well and truly stuck in a drs train and you'll see through here i do get a bit close i do try to you know put some pressure on at different points of the lap but in general 
it just wasn't to be and I just couldn't get close enough you can see um, there Lucas running off the track that should have been in my opinion his second warning after his turn one cut um, but I believe he didn't get a warning for that one either as uh, now lap four you'll see we're coming out for a personal best I'm actually pretty close to Lucas here three tenths off and then ahead of him is my teammate Philip Presnader we set a personal best by nearly four tenths so a very strong lap on uh, lap four but again trying things getting better lines but it wasn't really resulting in anything and I just couldn't get close enough and then gradually as the laps tick over you'll see the gaps um, around us you see uh, we're, we're still hanging on with Lucas but I could feel in my tires that we were starting to lose a bit of grip and obviously the hard tire was starting to hit a sweet spot and everyone on those which is the majority of the grid was starting to improve their pace and I was struggling to hang on so yeah pretty much you'll see now cutting onto lap 11 the gap now is starting to increase you can see Lucas is six and a half, six and a half tenths um five you know it's kind of bouncing around but five to six to seven tenths ahead of ahead of me at different points and uh, behind us Warren and Fabrizio Donoso are closing in so yeah it's kind of shifting a little bit but we're meant to pit lap 12 that's our scheduled pit stop lap so one more lap on these tires which we are starting to struggle with with some front left wear and we can bring this one home so here we are then lap number 12 of the race you see behind Warren one tenth behind meanwhile we're nearly nine tenths behind Lucas so we're really struggling now to hold on to these tires I'm just trying to get the car back to the pits and then lap 12 is where the race unfortunately unraveled for us so you'll see here if you look ahead um unbeknownst to me we were forced by oh, a shit. rule in the pit oh. entry to stay within the white lines that was in the driver's briefing and by doing that oh. it means visibility is very tricky and oh. i did not see why, why philip, philip in? heading into the pits uh, and he started on the hard tie he's going for a big undercut onto the mediums oh. But you can see here, he also gets held by the McLaren. Oh um, but essentially, so we've been held and we've had to stack, which, yeah, is a, is a, is a, is a, is a big error and a big problem in lead racing because when you're in the DRS train, the, the entire grid is within that DRS train. Once you drop out, yeah. There's no way back, especially me. I'm on hard tyres now. Even then, everyone. Box for softs, it means nothing. Yeah, you can hear that. Me saying everyone's going to box for softs, you know, or everyone's going to go for mediums. So basically, we're going to be on the wrong strategy, the slowest tyre, and we're a long way away. So yeah, that was game over. A miscommunication, you know. Um, obviously, me and Philip spoke after the race. It's all good. I've got nothing, you know, against it. I, I totally understand, and I'm not upset him whatsoever uh, but that did mean it was going to be the end of our race and uh, yeah I, I was lonely by myself so i did eventually pit for a set of softs i was hoping for a safety car uh, and didn't happen so i set a, a quick little fastest lap just to kind of see what you know what pace i had and yeah lap 25 we are gonna come into the pit lane and retire from the race and a bit of a painful one but you know that can happen from time to time unfortunately we weren't speaking on discord there's no communication so yeah game over for us as we retire from the race here at france but guys that is going to be it from me here today if you enjoyed the video leave a like subscribe for more daily f1 content as always thank you to the members of the channel for supporting and if you haven't done so already check out the two videos on your screen right now and i'll see you guys next time for some more league racing content until then take care and it's goodbye from me